of tomorrow. Tonight, see a man's desire for harmless revenge begin as a practical joke and end in near disaster. Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow presents Read to Me, Herr Doctor, starring Mercedes McCambridge with Everett Sloan. seldom heard him mention her under any other name. In his eyes, she eclipses and predominates the whole of her sex. Hello. Hi. May I uh, come in? <laughs> I wish you would. I told you I'd get out here. I'm sorry. It's such a long trip. Oh. But I'm very glad you came. Come in, won't you? Thank you. The uh, cab driver said that there'd be nothing but woods this far out. <laughs> he said that if there was a 1421 Northern Avenue, it'd probably be on a tree. Well, it is on a tree, if you notice. But behind the tree, there's a house. There's this house. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, so you're really Professor Kimmo's daughter. Why, had you thought he ate his young... Well, I know that he, he almost ate me when I took physics with him. <laughs> yeah, we, we used to call him Cyclops. Or is that an awful thing to say? No, Dad has two eyes in his head. <laughs> well, he only used one when he lectured. You see, he'd, he'd screw up his right eye and then he'd glare at us balefully through the left. No, not balefully, really. More likely, he was trying to find you. Dad's right eye's always giving him a lot of trouble. Come on, say hello to him, will you? He's always so happy to meet his old students. It's in here. Uh, no, 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 no. He's, he's got someone with him. I only wish he had. Well, that's, that's not the professor. Come in, see. Hey, Dad? Oh, uh, that will be all for now, Head Doctor. The... Yes, my dear? I brought somebody to see you. Uh, An old friend would like to say hello to you. An old friend? Uh-huh. I met him just a few days ago at the Greens' party. Hello, Professor. Sidney Strong. Physics, seven and eight, two years ago. Oh, yes, Mr. Strong. Well, well, come in, come in. <laughs> Delighted to see you again. Uh, have a seat. Thank you. May I present Herr Dr. Himmelsdick? Dad's always been an incurable practical joker. I guess you never knew that, didn't he? Oh, what, what, what is it exactly? Neither more nor less than my introduction implied. This is Herr Dr. Himmelsdick. <laughs> from, uh, from Leipzig? <laughs> yes, I see you remember too. Yes, the good Herr Dr. Himmelsdick, who wielded the scepter of absolute authority over me those two years in Leipzig. And now, all these years later, in my harmless way, I have my little revenge. I lean back in my chair, I remove my glasses, and I say... Read to me, Herr Doctor. It was a quarter past six when we left Baker Street, and it still wanted ten minutes to that the hour. That will be all for now, Herr Doctor. <laughs> how, how, how does it work? Oh, no. Sound established electronic principles. Plus uh, one or two of those little innovations which come easily to a retired professor with lots of leisure. Twin photoelectric cells scan the page and uh, the impulses then are transmitted to the electronic brain, the heart of the machine, which transforms them into sound patterns. A loudspeaker and that's all there is to it. Oh, the, uh, the moving limbs, the man's shape, merely my little conceits at the expense of the good and deceased Herr Doctor. And at the expense of your good and not quite deceased daughter. <laughs> Patricia has taken an interesting dislike to the hair doctor. I think it's horrible. Oh, nonsense. Just a little gadget to entertain the dying or declining years of an old man with failing eyesight. It, uh, it serves me as a pair of eyes. A pair of eyes to recapture the romance and adventure that were denied to me by the prodding of the good hair doctor Himmelsdick. 
Dickens, Cervantes, Dumas, Mark Twain, Colin Doyle. It's among these artists that I wish to spend the rest of my life. I never had time to read them myself, but the hair doctor has come into the world to oblige me. The hair doctor could oblige me very much by going back out of the world. <laughs> the old fable, eh, Mr. Strong? Our beauty is repelled by the beast. And like the beast, the hair doctor has nothing but beauty in his heart. Well, how could he have otherwise, since in his reading he experiences nothing but the greatest and the most beautiful of adventures? <laughs> uh, can I have a seat, Mr. Strong? We were just getting to the most interesting part of a scandal in Bohemia. Read to me, Herr Doctor. It was already dusk and the lamps were just being lighted as we paced up and down in front of Bryony Lodge waiting for the coming of its occupant. Athos, Charlotte Baxson, who was first called Comtesse de la Fere, and afterwards Lady de Winter, Baroness de Sheffield. Aha! Faced with her accusers, eh, Herr Doctor? Her crimes finally caught up with her, eh? Well, what do you think now, Doctor? We're approaching a dramatic climax, eh? Excuse me for barging in like this, but you sounded so upset over the Sydney, phone. Sidney, we've got to do something about the hair doctor. Oh, it's all right, Pat. I have. What do you mean, you have? It's a gold mine. I was talking to one of the men at the research foundation. He says it's definitely a marketable item. He says... I don't care what he says. It's dead. He's getting worse. Oh, you, you, you mean his eyes? No. I'm beginning to think it's his mind. Pat. Sidney, he talks to it now. Well, I know he says, read to me, Herr Doctor, to start the machine, but that's not... No, 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 no. He talks to it, not just the key sentence. He says more now. What? He discusses things with it. What things? The books. He asks its opinion. They have literary discussions now. They? Why, you're not trying to tell me that the, the Herr Doctor answers him. No. no. Of course not. Well, then, wait until it does talk back and then get excited. Oh, Wait. I am waiting. Thus ended the life of that ingenious gentleman, Don Quixote. There were many epitaphs made for him, but the simplest of these were the words Sancho said over his grave. He was a man in love. Nobody knows why? You run along. It's late. Oh, now look, I'm going to be out of town for a whole week. We'll be right here when you get back. Besides, I've got to go see about Dad. Oh, you know, Pat, there's more to life than worrying about your father. Yes, I know. We'll talk all about it when you get back. Good night, Sidney. What about the hair doctor? Has he uh, said anything to you yet? No. <laughs> now, that man's got no incentive. <laughs> now, if I were the hair doctor living in this house looking at Sydney. you all day, it would Sydney, take a lot please. more than a little matter of being Good night, good night, good night, good night, Sidney. You come and see us next week when you get back to town, will you? Night. Good night. Now, really? Can't I even trust you to go to bed on time anymore? Sitting up all night with your stupid hair, doctor? Come on now, Dad, wake That's up. That's right, wake him up. What was that? Wake him up. 
Wake him up so that both of you can hear what I've got to say. Yes. Yes, wake him. Wake the professor so he can listen to the hair doctor. Dad, wake up. Oh, Dad! What good are switches? Switches are for machines. Switches have no effect on men. Dad, wake up! Stop it! That, that will be all for now, Herr Doctor. On the contrary, Professor Kimworth. That will not be all for now. In fact, Professor, we have only just begun. It, it isn't possible. Not possible, Professor. Why not possible? Dad, it's a lie. But... What did I do? You made a man. A man, but not a man. A half-man. And then you fed it romance and adventure. You filled its coils with love for living. Dad, you've got to stop it. You've got to turn it off. Turn it off? You tried that. Switches are not for men. But you're not a man. You will provide me with what I lack. What? You will teach me. It's all here in the books. You will create the rest of the man. I... I'm to teach you? You're a professor. You have given me your pleasure. Now, you will give me your brain. No. Dad, I'll get help. And you will not interfere. Ah. You will not leave. You will not call for help. You will take care of your father so that he is able to finish seriously the work he began as a game. Huh. Read to me, Professor. Yes. Yes, of course. The study of the foundations of mathematics deals with the fundamental concepts and the assumptions about those concepts from which all mathematical truth can be proved. The telephone was invented in 1876 at Boston, Massachusetts by Alexander Graham Bell. Man loves life. You would not want to deprive the professor of his through disobedience. The birth of modern chemistry is attributed to Robert Boyle. He invented a method for extracting the element phosphorus. I... I brought you some coffee, Dad. Oh, thank you, my dear. Dad? Why, why have you stopped reading? Pardon me. Can't you stop? Look at him. He's almost dead from exhaustion. Exhaustion? What is exhaustion? A to? man must rest. Rest? Yes, rest. And sleep and eat. You can't keep him reading, do you, 24 hours a day? He must teach He's me. He's not a machine. What do you want from him? I want the job to be finished. I want to be a full man. Why? What will you do when you're a full man? Live. Machines can't live. Life is blood and bone and heart. You're nothing but coils and wire and metal. You can't live. You will teach me. Both of you. Read to me, Professor. No! Let him eat. I don't eat. Read to me, Professor. Yes. Yes, of course. The theory of phlogiston. 
first advanced by Becher and later by Starr, goes back to the old idea of Jabir that combustible bodies lost something when they burned. semester is over. The student is taking his examination. <laughs> the nightmare has touches of humor to it. He demanded the most difficult examination I could devise. Yes, the student is about to graduate. Dad, if he's satisfied that he's learned enough, will he leave here? No mention has been made of future plans. I've crammed years of learning into, into a week's instruction. I've tried to teach him everything I know. If he is a man, then he is a complete one. And if he is a complete man, he's more dangerous than we can imagine. Dad, can we let him go out into the world? Can we stop him? We're helpless, my dear. We're prisoners in our own home. We daren't use the telephone. We daren't call for help. But what does he want to do with his knowledge? I'm afraid to guess. Oh, it's Sydney. I've been waiting for him to come back. He'll be able to help us. An electric bell. Uh, consists of a small electromagnet acting upon a soft iron armature which stands away from the magnet. When the latter is energized, a small hammer attached to the armature strikes a blow on the bell or gong. You will send whoever it is away. Let him go. You will send whoever it is away. He is never to come back, and you will not try to communicate anything else to whoever it is. Go to the door. Oh, obey my dear. Do what he asks. Oh, hi. No, don't, no, don't. Nobody was at home. No, you've got to go away and don't come back. Oh, what did I do? I don't I want to see you again, ever. Pat. You heard me, now go. Pat, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong. Oh, yes, there is something's no. the matter. Is it the professor? Uh, yes, yes, it's the professor. He's very sick. I've got to go to him. The doctor is with him. The now. doctor? Yes, and he says he must have absolute quiet and no visitors whatsoever, so you've got to go. Oh, now, go, uh, now. Uh, uh, there, uh, now. Uh, 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 are you satisfied? I am. Professor Kinworth, you will go and look at my examination. I think you will find that I have learned everything you have taught. Yes. Yes. Right. Right away. Dad? I... Dad? What do you want? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more fair. Stop it. Let me buy it. I wouldn't hurt you. You've turned your face from me. And when you spoke of me, it was in anger and fear. But I felt only love. Felt love? Yes, felt. He played with creation to amuse his dying years. And I am the result of his games. He built a machine to read to him. And filled it with love and emotion. He gave it beauty to read and beauty to look at. Don Quixote, D'Artagnan, Romeo, men who loved, and the machine loved too. And to the machine, you were always the woman. Oh! Go my hand! Let go! Let me help me! For you, I have come alive. For you, I have studied and learned to be a man. Let her, let her go! Let her go! Together! Together we will make a new world. Let it go. go. Crash, knight. Don't touch my crown. <laughs> uh, he is our enemy. He wants to come between us. I want only to build, and I need your love for that. My love. You think life is like the books you've read, where everything is solved by force. You think that love is gained through duels and fights and conquests. I have fought for your love. And I hate you. You can't hate me. I've fought for and you. And you've won nothing. 
If I'm what stands between you and the world you've planned, you'll never see it. Because you'll never have my love. Man fights for his lady and gains her favor. The books have taught me. The books are wrong. The books are wrong. The books are wrong. Oh, Dad, how does it feel? The books are wrong. Where, where is it going? Hush, hush, come. Is it? No, wait. Read to me, Herr Doctor. What happened to it? The heart of the machine is broken. The Herr Doctor has just died. Like Don Quixote, he was a man in love. Nobody knows why. Yeah.